Hi YouTube, this is Ian from Big Rock Media. So after I posted my F-150 review several months ago, I got a lot of questions and comments about the EcoBoost engine versus the 5 liter V8. And really this kind of devolves into a debate between turbocharging a smaller engine versus providing a larger displacement V8 with no turbocharger. There's a lot of concerns and discussion about the reliability of the EcoBoost with the twin turbo versus the perceived long-term reliability of the 5 liter V8 or any other V8 engine. So today, that's what we're gonna talk about. This little badge right here, this EcoBoost badge. What does it mean? How do I like driving it? But most of all, how does it compare to the last F-150 I had, which was a 2015 F-150 with the five liter V8 and the six speed transmission. And we're gonna compare that to this truck, which is a 2017 Platinum with a second generation EcoBoost 3.5 and a 10 speed auto. So I've actually owned both of these, not just theorized about them. So I'm gonna tell you why I made the switch, what the trade-offs were, good and bad, and would I buy this truck again. So here's how I'm gonna break this down. First, I'm gonna tell you why did I make the switch from the five liter truck to the EcoBoost truck. Then I'm gonna give you the pros and cons to each motor as I see them. Then third, we'll take a deep dive into sort of the reliability discussion on the EcoBoost engine. And finally, I'll tell you what I would buy if I was buying a new truck today. Okay, so first let's go over what led me to trade my 2015 with the five liter Coyote V8 for this truck, a 2017 Platinum with a second gen 3.5 EcoBoost and the 10 speed. Okay, so really to tell the story, I have to take you back to 2017. So at the time I was driving a 2015 Chevy Colorado. That was a newer generation Colorado that they're still selling today. Now I really loved the Colorado for kind of its smaller size, how easy it was to park, the fuel economy, and just the everyday livability of that truck. Now the problem with that truck came in when I tried to tow our travel trailer, which at the time was a Forest River R-Pod, but I also wanted to take a motorcycle and a bed of the truck with me. Now I had made the stupid mistake of getting the five foot bed with that Colorado, which meant that I could not tow a travel trailer and have a motorcycle because with the tailgate all the way down, it would really interfere with the hitch of the travel trailer. Also, when having a lot of weight in the bed and also towing a travel trailer, the V6 engine of the Colorado felt a little bit strained. So I started test driving different trucks and seeing what was out there. Now, in the past, I had owned a Toyota Tundra, a 2010 model, and I had also owned an older uh, GMC Sierra. So I never owned a Ford at that time, and I was kind of curious to see how they were. My local dealer had just gotten in a pre-owned 2015 uh, crew cab short bed with the five liter V8, the six speed transmission. It didn't have the 10 speed at that time. It had the 302A package, which was a nice package on the XLT. It had the 373 rear end, uh, the towing package and other stuff. And it was a nicely equipped truck for a great price. After test driving that truck quite a bit, I kind of fell in love with the 5L motor and just how that truck drove in general. And we ended up making a deal on it. So I traded my Colorado and drove home with the 2015 F-150. Now, I also forgot to mention that I had had a Mustang with the Coyote V8, so I kind of already was predisposed to liking that engine. And so when I found it in the truck package, I really was kind of a no brainer for me. Now, during the time I had that truck, I had zero issues with it. It, it drove great, the sound was amazing. Um, there was a lot of things I liked about that engine and that truck in particular. So why then would I get rid of that beautiful uh, guard metallic green F-150 and get this truck? Well, that's the story that I'm gonna tell you now. So when we traded in our R-Pod trailer for a larger and heavier Lance trailer, that's when things started to shift. So we took one trip that I can remember in particular where we went up and over both sides of the Rocky Mountains, all through Colorado and Utah. And going over those high passes, I remember many times where we were at, you know, eight, nine, 10,000 feet or even higher, you know, the truck in second gear at four or 5,000 RPM trying to get up those grades. You see a naturally aspirated uh, smaller V8, especially something like the 5.0, while it's a great engine, it doesn't really have a lot of torque at the very low end of the RPM range. So to pull a heavy load up a hill, you need to use a very high RPM. There it goes. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is a uh, six speed and it's holding the RPMs up. That's what it's all about. If you want to hold your speed, you've got to have the torque and you've got to be able to shift down and have the RPMs keep. Coming back from that trip, we ended up driving all the way across Utah, like on the 70, I think it is. And there was a really, really bad headwind. And I remember 
for most of going through Utah that day, we were in like second or third gear at like over 4,000 RPM. We were getting around six, five to six miles a gallon and the truck really just didn't seem to enjoy it very much. Now, this was made worse by the fact that I had 34 inch or 35 inch tires. I actually had the Raptor tires and wheels on that truck, which changed the final drive gearing. I do admit that. But the other thing that was bugging me about that particular truck was that I made the mistake of not checking when I bought it. And it actually had the 23 gallon gas tank in it, not the 36 gallon tank that you can get as an optional upgrade. Now, if you've ever towed a trailer, you know you're getting like eight to 10 miles a gallon. And when you only have like around 20 gallons of gas, that means you're looking for fuel every 150 to 200 miles, which gets old really fast. So it goes without saying that as I was driving home from that trip, I really started to think about what my next truck might look like. So I knew that the EcoBoost engines were known for having almost diesel-like low-end torque because of the turbocharging that they have. What gear are you in now? Fifth gear. Fifth gear. So it seems like fifth gear is what it likes. Yeah, fifth gear rated 60, right? Yeah. Yeah, is that's that fourth? That's that was only, fourth. Yeah, I kicked down there. Yeah, and that still only gets up to 3,600 RPM, which is still not much for a gas oh. engine. But you still have reserve power. I mean, can oh, you? Oh, yeah, I could, I could go up this hill 90 miles an hour if you let me. But no, I, think I won't you let, let you. Me. You really no. ought to let me. No, no, let me, no. Let me, let me. <laughs> no, no. It seems like there's so much power left over. Yeah. Well, there is. There yeah, the is. Fact I mean, that it's not the lower gear, I'm almost surprised that it could yeah. be sitting in fifth the whole time. 3,100 RPM. Okay, I may have to try this. They were also claimed to get a little bit better miles per gallon. And they just seemed like a really good package and something that had worked for Ford for quite a long time. Now I also wanted some other features in my truck. So my XLT was a fairly basic package, although some of you would disagree with that, but I kind of wanted some of the stupid features that most of you will make fun of. Things like the adaptive cruise control and the ventilated seats and other things that probably aren't worth it to most of you, but it's something that I kind of wanted. Now I didn't feel it was time for me to go to a heavy duty truck because after all our trailer was under 6,000 pounds and I wasn't really, I didn't have the use, usage case for getting a diesel and all the expense of the maintenance and the initial cost of that. So I kind of wanted to stick to a half ton gas truck. So I, I went to test driving stuff again. So I tested the new uh, GM trucks, both with the 5.3 V8 and the 6.2 V8. I did like the 6.2 with the eight speed. I tested the Ram with the 5.7 Hemi. The newer Ram was very attractive, the 2019 redesign with a better interior. That looked really good. But I kept coming back to the Ford and every time I would test drive an F-150 with the 3.5 EcoBoost, I was blown away by the power and the torque and just how it drove. So after kind of narrowing my search down to an F-150 with the EcoBoost, um, I started looking for platinum. So I ended up finding this, this white platinum up in uh, the LA area and made a deal on the truck, long story short. So I've had my 2017 F-150 here for about a year and a half, and it's been a really great truck so far. So why don't we get into talking about the different motor choices, why I chose the EcoBoost and how it differs from the other motors. So if you've looked at F-150s, if you're in the market for one, you realize that there's a ton of engine choices. Now that's a great thing for the consumer because you have a ton of different choices to choose from and you can choose what suits your needs. But the question is, what engine should you get for how you're using it? So in the F-150 of these generations from 2015 and on, you can get a number of different engines. Uh, you can get a base V6 engine, naturally aspirated, which mostly you find in like work trucks. After the base V6, you step up to the 2.7 liter EcoBoost. Now the 2.7 is a newer engine than the 3.5. Ford developed it for use in a lot of their different vehicles. It makes less power and torque than the 3.5 and it also has a little different design, but we're not gonna get into that in detail in this video. After the 2.7, technically in terms of power and torque, you've got the 5 liter V8. Now the 5 liter V8, sometimes called the Coyote V8, is a very popular choice for the F-150. Ford also uses it in a Mustang. A lot of people know it from the Mustang and it's certainly a great engine for that car. Now after the 5 liter V8, you go up to the 3.5 EcoBoost. Um, the 3.5 EcoBoost is one of the best sellers in the F-150. Uh, in this generation of truck, it made quite a bit of power, though they've increased it for 2021. I should also mention you've got a three liter power stroke diesel. Um, it's not a very popular choice because it's an expensive option to upgrade to. And when you look at the power and torque compared to the other engines for the price that you have to pay for that, it doesn't make a lot of sense for most people. But some people who just love diesels, they're gonna go for that choice. 
Now for 2021, they've added a hybrid engine, which is kind of an amazing option to go with if you're looking at a new 21. But that truck is just hitting dealerships. I don't even know if you can buy one as I'm filming this, so we're not gonna get too much into that. But the hybrid adds um, quite a bit of power and a lot of torque, 570 foot-pounds of torque, which is quite a uh, accomplishment for a half-ton truck. So for this video, I'm really focusing on the Coyote V8 um, versus the 3.5 EcoBoost. Now, a lot of the things I'm gonna say about the turbo versus the V8 would apply also to the 2.7, but I'm gonna kind of focus on the power numbers and the engineering of the 3.5, because I think that's what a lot of you are comparing it to. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention transmissions, because transmissions affect how the truck is gonna drive based on what engine you get as well, depending on what year. So through 2016, the only transmission uh, in the F-150 was the six-speed 6R80 uh, Ford automatic transmission. Uh, it was a good transmission, um, doesn't seem to have too many failure points. Now for 2017, uh, Ford introduced the 10-speed, which they had co-developed with GM, and they put that on the 3.5 EcoBoost truck, but not on some of the other engine choices that they had in 2017. But for 2018, the Coyote V8 also got the 10 speed, which was a pretty big upgrade. Now we need to talk about the changes to the EcoBoost, the 3.5 EcoBoost for 2017, and then a little also bit about the changes to the five liter for 2018. So in 2017, Ford introduced the second generation 3.5 EcoBoost. Now, this was um, somewhat similar to the 3.5 they had offering before, but it, it, it was re-engineered. So in 2017, for the second gen, they added port and direct fuel injection to the engine. So by having dual injection, it really helps prevent the carbon buildup in, in the valves. Um, that's important because if you only have direct fuel injection, what tends to happen is uh, your, your valves will kind of get carboned up. By adding a port fuel injection to give an extra kind of explosion in there to keep the heat up, it, uh, it doesn't build up carbon as much. So that's a nice feature to have. They still used Borg Warner turbos, but the turbos were different. They have different blades on the turbos. The truck had higher compression. They also made changes to the cams, uh, the cam phasers. Uh, it had two cam changes instead of one. So, so they went through and made quite a bit of changes to the engine to, with the aim of making it more reliable, more durable. And they took what they had learned from, you know, seven or eight years of producing the first gen EcoBoost 3.5. Now I mentioned the Coyote V8. So for 2018, not only did the Coyote V8 get the 10 speed, 10 R80 transmission, but it also got uh, dual injection as well. Um, now they made some other small changes as well to the engine in 2018, but we're not gonna go into details there. So let's quickly review the power ratings of these different engines. So the five liter Coyote up until 2018, its rating was 385 horsepower and 387 torque. So that was the engine that I had in my 2015 F-150. Uh, the second generation 5.0, 2018 and later, they bumped that up to 395 horsepower and 400 torque. So a little bit of a bump there in power. Combined with the fact that you got the 10 speed in 2018, that truck felt quite a bit more lively. So the first gen EcoBoost, uh, like the 2010, around 2010, all the way up to 2016 F-150 on the 3.5 was 365 horsepower and 420 foot pounds of torque. Now you notice that the horsepower is slightly under the five liter V8 of that era, but the torque is higher. But most importantly, it's the torque curve that you have to care about. And we're gonna put up some images here of the torque curve. The EcoBoost engines make more torque at low RPM, far more than the V8s do. So it's not just the peak. It went up to 375 horsepower and 470 foot-pounds of torque. So a nice increase of 50 foot-pound feet of torque. So we're going to get to the pros and cons of the Coyote V8 versus the EcoBoost engines in a minute. But first I want to touch on fuel economy. So I'm not going to delve too deeply into fuel economy. I'm not even going to list the EPA ratings because number one, you can look those up on your own if you care. But also uh, sharing my experience of what I found between the V8 and the EcoBoost is that the, the fuel economy is not dramatically different between the engines. Now I understand Ford's idea behind the EcoBoost branding. And you know, I know how branding is done. I know how marketing works. I know how companies work. So they wanted to give this eco image uh, to the whole, uh, these engines saying, oh, well, they're lower displacement, but we're adding a forced induction, so they're gonna give you better fuel economy. Well, in the real world, they really don't give you much better fuel economy, if any. And the reason is that in real world driving, you're dipping into the turbo boost. And once you add that boost in and you're driving around under boost, 
um, it has to add fuel to compensate for all that air getting crammed into the engine. And if you really think about this, if you're driving 70 miles an hour down the freeway, everything else being equal, it takes a certain amount of horsepower to overcome the wind resistance and the friction resistance of your tires and push your truck down the freeway. So yes, there are slight differences in efficiency between different engines, but ultimately there's other factors that come into play. So I don't really like the name EcoBoost. I think it's a misleading name, but again, marketing, that's what marketing is about. Um, I don't find it, this to get much better economy than my Coyote V8 did. Um, for towing a, towing a 5,000 pound trailer, I get um, around 11 miles per gallon in this, and I would get around 10 to 11 miles a gallon in my 5.0. So it was kind of the same there. Now, I will say if you go out on the highway and set the cruise control to 65 on this truck, I can get on a good day, um, I can get 24 miles a gallon maybe on the highway uh, at steady state cruising. Now the 5 liter V8 wasn't really able to quite get up to that. I might get 22, 23 on, on that similar run, but again, pretty small change in efficiency overall. Um, for around town driving, again, I don't see much difference between the EcoBoost and the 5 liter. I guess if you really, really stayed out of the boost and had a super light foot that maybe, just maybe the EcoBoost will give you better economy, but it's, it's pretty minimal to be honest. So I wouldn't use fuel economy as really a deciding factor. Now, the caveat to what I'm saying is I'm talking about the 3.5 EcoBoost here in this discussion. The 2.7 does get a little bit better economy than the 3.5 and the Coyote V8, so do need to keep that in mind. If you don't have a lot of heavy loads and you want the better fuel economy, the 2.7 is something you should really look at. So as we get into the pros and cons here between the different engines, uh, what are the first things you notice when you drive them back to back? So there's a couple things. Um, one of the first most obvious things you notice is the difference in sound. It goes without saying that the Coyote is an amazing sounding engine. Yes, go to the floor. You know, the Coyote wakes up over like 4,500 RPM. It sounds I'm like 50, it, look, it, it goes right to red line too. Yes. Right to 57. It goes over red line. Holy cow, it's <laughs> beautiful. Just a little Whereas the EcoBoost engines sort of sound like, you know, amplified vacuum cleaners. Now they do give you, uh, they do pipe like a fake engine sound to the speakers, but it's not that convincing. I don't find it offensive at all, but it also doesn't really sound anything like the deep growl of the Coyote, or any V8 for that matter. Now the other thing you're going to notice when you drive them back to back, and this is going to be amplified with the more weight you're carrying or towing, is the EcoBoost engines, especially the 3.5, right off the bottom of RPM range, like right off of idle, you feel the shove of torque like propelling you forward, and you don't get that in the Coyote V8. The way the V8 drives is that it's a linear power band, but the, RP, the, the torque and horsepower build with RPM. So it, it's satisfying to drive, but you really have to wring its neck to get the power out of it. Whereas with this engine, with the 3.5, it can short shift all day at, at 2,500 to 3,000 RPM and propel you along really well. Whereas if you try to get the same acceleration out of the 5 liter, you're going to be revving a lot higher. Now that's just kind of a personal preference thing, but again, as you get into towing or heavier loads, having that low end torque, I mean, really that's why people go to diesels, right? So the EcoBoost is, to me, is kind of like a halfway point between a naturally aspirated gas engine and a diesel because of the way it delivers that low RPM torque. So my pros and cons to the five liter versus the three five. Um, the five liter, the pros are it's very reliable. It doesn't have many reliability issues. Now, there's a caveat to that. I think in 2018 and later, they had some deceleration rattles. If you go on the forums, there's a lot of people who've had this problem and some trucks have even been lemon law buybacks, but I don't know how widespread that is, so we're not gonna go too far into that. But generally, the five liter has been a good engine for Ford. Um, the 5 liter also has a nice thing, which some people don't know, which is that it has an 8 liter or 8 quart oil capacity. That allows you to maybe go a little bit more between changes, and I like having that extra oil. The EcoBoost engine, at least the 3.5, only holds 6 liters of oil, so I tend to change it quite a bit more often. Of course, the other pro to the 5.0, as we've already mentioned, is the sound. Now, the downsides to the 5.0 are the lack of torque, and not just the lack of peak torque, but the lack of torque at the low RPMs. It simply can't match the EcoBoost for that. 
the other potential downside to the Coyote is that the tuning potential is not nearly as much as with the boosted engine. So with the boosted engines, you have the ability, if you want, to turn up the boost pressure through aftermarket solutions and basically have your truck make a crap ton more power. You can add something like 100 foot-pounds of torque and almost 100 horsepower by simply flashing your computer on the EcoBoost trucks, and there's no way you could ever do that with a 5-liter V8. It's just something to consider. So the pros to the EcoBoost 3.5 are the peak torque and the torque curve are just incredible on this engine. Um, you can get huge gains from tuning. It feels really, really fast and it's pretty fun to race people with it. Um, and it tows amazingly well. And that ultimately is why I, I switched to the 3.5. I think if I wasn't towing a travel trailer, I'd probably have the Coyote V8 just because I like the reliability of it. I like the sound of it. And I don't need to have the complication of the twin turbos if I'm not towing a lot of heavy load. Uh, the cons to the EcoBoost engine, we've gone through some of this already, but it doesn't sound very good. Um, it's much more complex, so in theory there's much more to go wrong with two turbochargers and all the plumbing involved with that. Also, here's something that a lot of the car reviewers don't talk about, is that a small turbocharged engine is going to generate a lot more heat. So the EcoBoost engines are run very hot. Um, when I tow my trailer up steep grades and I'm running quite a bit of boost, my coolant temperature, my engine temperature gets up there pretty high, you know, 230, 240. Now, some people have said that's normal. Some people have said, oh, that's not normal. That's something's wrong with it. I can't find anything wrong with my truck. Um, other people have experienced this. I think just in general, uh, with running a lot of boost on a small engine like this, there's no way around it. There's a lot of heat uh, going into that engine and it's got to deal with it. So that's something to consider. So how do you decide which engine to get? I mean, that's really the question, right? So I think it boils down to this. If you're willing to give up the sound of the V8 and the reliability and the less complexity that that engine has and trade that off for more low end torque, more peak torque and better performance hauling weight and towing trailers, then you, sh then you get the EcoBoost. But if you're not really into pulling heavy loads and you can live without that nice shove of low end torque and you really like the sound of the V8 and you like the fact that there's not twin turbos and all that stuff to break, then you should definitely stick to the V8 choice. You're not gonna see a huge difference in fuel economy. The initial cost is you know, pretty similar when you buy the trucks. Um, resale value is about the same. So you know, really you have to decide what you're doing with the truck. But of course, a test drive is gonna be the most useful thing for you as well. Now for the 2018 revision to the 5.0, it is a little bit stronger and with a 10 speed, it definitely does feel a little bit quicker. But when you're towing trailers, you're still gonna be at those high RPMs, much more so than you would be with the EcoBoost engine. If you're okay with that, then fine. The five liters totally up to the job of pulling heavy trailers, but the EcoBoost is just better. Now I did say we were gonna to try to talk about reliability. So reliability is a really hard thing to talk about because there's not many accurate data sources for reliability on these trucks. <clears throat> you look at organizations like JD Power, which is kind of just really a marketing firm, and even other groups like Consumer Reports, it's kind of hard to sort out truth from fiction. And there's always some sort of advertising by the manufacturers somehow getting in there and making it not so objective. When you're researching things online, you have to keep one thing in mind. People go on the internet on truck forums or motorcycle forums or whatever it is, usually to complain about a problem they have or to seek a solution for something they're going through that's wrong with their vehicle. So you don't, if you're happy with your truck and you're just living with it, no problems, and you're not going online to say, oh, I really like this, uh, who else likes it? No. You go online to complain or have problems. So you might perceive that there's a reliability issue with a certain engine or a certain vehicle, but how do you separate that from just internet hype and maybe a few dozen owners being very vocal about their problems? That's really an anecdote and not a data set. So you really can't go based on that, unfortunately. No engine is perfect and no vehicle is perfect. So while yes, the EcoBoost does have more complexity and certainly does in the long run have a lot more that can break and cost more money to fix, there's really no hard data saying that the, the Coyote is gonna be more reliable than the 3.5 or the 2.7 or, or anything for that matter. So you might be wondering what would I buy for my next truck? So I'm really pretty happy with this truck besides the fact that I mentioned about kind of it, it gets a little hot going up grades when I'm towing sometimes. 
That does bug me, and I do worry a little bit about the long-term reliability of the EcoBoost engine, but I'm still within the factory warranty. I've got about 53,000 miles. The warranty expires at 60,000 miles. I think once I'm out of that warranty, once I'm above 60K, I'm probably gonna be a little more nervous at that point about the reliability, but I'm not sure enough that I would trade this in right away. For me, it's not just gonna be about the engine choice on my next truck. It's gonna be more about the hauling cap capability. So if you were to watch my video on towing for dummies or towing made easy, I talk a lot about how to calculate your payload and how that affects what kind of trailer you can tow. And the fact is when I tow my small 20 foot lens trailer and load my motorcycle in the bed of this truck, I'm overloading my truck. I'm over the maximum payload. So with only a 1500 pound payload on this particular truck, I really don't have a lot of room to haul weight when I'm towing my trailer. When you add the tongue weight of the trailer plus stuff I want to put in the bed of the truck, passengers, cargo, etc. So if I was going to buy another half ton truck, um, man, you know, there's so many good choices. I like the GM trucks with the 6.2 V8 and the, I think they have a 10 speed in them now. I can't remember. That drives really well. Um, I still like the Fords a lot. I've never owned a Ram, but I admit that their, their interior quality is amazing and uh, they ride really well because they have the coil springs on, on the rear end of those 1500s. Now for 2021, Ford has redesigned, uh, refresh, I should say the F-150 and they have some revised engine choices. So that hybrid EcoBoost is pretty tempting on the new F-150 because of the torque at 570 foot-pounds, the horsepower is impressive. Um, you can get that onboard generator up to 7,000 watts, which is kind of cool, I have to admit that. That's a really nice thing to get. But I did spec out one of those trucks on Ford's website for the 2021 F-150, and I was able to build an XLT truck, not even a Lariat, to almost $60,000. So. We're getting pretty high up there for half ton trucks in terms of the prices. Now, if I look at heavy duty trucks, I'm not gonna get a diesel anytime soon just because I don't need that. I don't haul over 10,000 pounds. You know, I don't tow huge things. I, I don't need the complexity, the weight, the expense of a huge turbo diesel engine. But what does have my interest is the 7.3 Godzilla engine in the F-250 and F-350. I think that could be a really good choice for a lot of people like myself who kind of want something in between the half ton uh, and the heavy duty truck. So like it or not, forced induction, whether it's turbocharging, supercharging, or a combination is taking the automotive world by storm. There's no way around this. Automakers are searching for any efficiency gains they can get to meet government standards. They're trying to reduce emissions. So by putting in smaller engines and adding forced induction, they're able to achieve that goal. For the consumer, you get maybe a little bit more torque, maybe a little bit better driving. That's debatable and also debatable whether you get better fuel economy. But the fact is that's where the industry is going. There's a huge percentage of new cars that come with turbo engines, which never used to be the case. So if you're in the market for a new or used F-150, I really hope this comparison was useful for you. Um, you know, go out, test drive the trucks, do your research and make the choice that's right for you. Um, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Please hit the thumbs up button. It really helps me out with these videos to make more content. And uh, we'll see you out there. Be safe. Have a good holiday.